During 2017, a small toy called a fidget spinner became a viral consumer item. It not only captured the attention of Fed following resellers, but also dominated public discourse in a most unexpected way. Unlike other Fed toys, such as yo-yos and hula hoops, fidget spinners were marketed for their cognitive benefits, specifically as a concentration aid for people with ADHD and autism. This unusual claim was widely accepted by the public and promoted enthusiastically by various ADHD and autism activists and their supporters. In contrast, medical professionals were far more sceptical, especially after various studies failed to find any evidence that fidget spinners provided the benefits attributed to them. The fidget spinner craze had an extremely short life cycle, with popularity crashing after May 2017 and dying completely by the end of June. Since this time, its alleged therapeutic benefits have been comprehensively dismissed by a range of scientific studies, and the fidget spinner has almost completely vanished from public consciousness. How did this fad arise, and why did it fall? Let's go back to the origin of fidget spinners, which has been much debated. In 1993, chemical engineer Catherine Hettinger filed a patent for what is referred to in the documentation as a, quote, spinning toy, in US patent US 5591062A, which was awarded in 1997. However, she never brought this to commercial production and abandoned the patent in 2005. Despite this, several news outlets, including The Guardian and New York Times, credited Hedinger as the inventor and claimed she was struggling financially, having invented the toy to contribute to peace in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, supposedly by giving Palestinian children something to do other than throwing stones at Israeli police, but failed to profit from her invention while other people made their fortunes from it. This story was made more convincing when Bettinger established a Kickstarter campaign seeking to make money from the Fed. Although this was an attractive oppression narrative, in 2017 a Bloomberg News article by Joshua Brustein argued that Hedinger was not the actual inventor of the fidget spinner, providing evidence that the invention she patented did not even look like the fidget spinner of the Fed. Unlike the three-lobed wooden or plastic device spinning on ball bearings, Bettinger's original invention was a rubber ring placed over a finger and manually rotated around it. Bettinger has acknowledged she is not the inventor of the fidget spinner, saying, quote, Let's just say that I'm claimed to be the inventor, though an article in 2017 says she stands by the story that she invented her toy, quote, as a way of promoting peace, end quote, speaking specifically of being inspired by the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In May 2017, as the fidget spinner fad was already in decline, IT engineer Scott McCorskery claimed to have invented the device, citing his talk bar invented in 2014 and subsequently patented. McCorskery claimed to have originally come up with the idea as a way of amusing himself during lengthy and tedious business meetings. His handmade product was made from exotic materials such as tellurium copper, titanium, tungsten copper and zirconium, and sold to a niche market of wealthy buyers for between 139 and 800 US dollars. The torque bar has only two lobes as opposed to the three-lobed design of the model which became viral, though McCorskery later introduced a three-lobed device called the T3 Mini, selling for 129 US dollars. Despite the fact that the original torque bar had only two lobes, it is very likely to have been the inspiration of the later three-lobed product, especially given that the viral toy appeared a year or two after the talk bar became popular in 2015. From internet search term data and online sales data, it is clear that the fidget spinner trend did not start until March 2017, when interest started to rise suddenly. The product became viral shortly thereafter and started to accumulate a mythology of its own. As the fidget spinner rose in popularity, various claims began to be made about its extraordinary therapeutic properties. It was alleged to be a concentration aid for children and adults with ADHD, and a calming, stimming device for people with autism. On social media sites such as Tumblr, these claims became developed to an increasingly complex extent, with an entire fictional history of the fidget spinner being invented and promoted. However, at the same time, teachers at schools were finding the popular device was a growing problem, distracting students from their work and distracting them from paying attention. As teachers began banning them from classrooms, social media defences of fidget spinners became aggressive, with even bolder claims being made about them, 
and the mythology of their origin and purpose becoming even further separated from reality. The Tumblr post on screen now objects to fidget spinners being characterised as a toy, claiming that this characterization and the use of fidget spinners by neurotypical people trivialises a device which was, quote, originally intended, end quote, for neurodivergent people for whom it is an important therapeutic tool. The post says, quote, while neurotypicals can certainly find fidget tools to be useful, the way it is becoming increasingly popularised by neurotypicals is kind of trivialising and ignoring the true purpose of these fidget stim toys, end quote. It also says, quote, the way this stuff is being promoted is more a regular old toy than for its intended purpose, and I find that problematic, end quote. While noting, quote, the people trivialising fidget toys aren't all neurotypicals as well. Some of them are neurodivergent, end quote. The Post also complained that it was common for neurotypical people to, quote, dismiss the purpose of fidget toys and popularise them for an arbitrary purpose, end quote. The Post was made on the 17th of May 2017, just before the fidget spin fad crashed. It repeats the mythological origins story which was by now well established, the idea that fidget spinners were originally created specifically for neurodivergent people as a therapeutic tool. It also repeats other myths which had become common, such as that the device was being improperly referred to as a toy and that neurotypical people were using it for, quote, arbitrary purposes, end quote. In fact, neurotypical people were using it for exactly the same purpose as neurodivergent people, since many of them had accepted uncritically the false claims made concerning the therapeutic benefits of fidget spinners. A second Tumblr post, on screen now, makes similar statements, claiming that fidget spinners are, quote, not toys, end quote, and are instead stimulation agents for non-neurotypical children, end quote. The post also claims, quote, this stupid hipster fad is causing them to become distractions, leading them to be banned in certain places, and therefore making them unavailable to those who actually need them, end quote. The post ends by saying, quote, fidget spinners are ableist, end quote. In fact, even though fidget spinners were being banned in classrooms, teachers were making exceptions for neurodivergent students, who were therefore not being deprived of them. A third Tumblr post, on screen now, made on the 24th of May 2017, makes the same argument, saying that banning fidget spinners is, quote, like blaming prescription glasses for making the vision of kids with 2020 vision blurry, end quote saying prescription glasses are, quote, not meant for kids with 2020 eyesight any more than fidgets are meant for neurotypical kids, end quote. A fourth Tumblr post, on screen now, by a self-identified neurodivergent person, repeats the therapeutic claims for fidget spinners, asserting, quote, for some, it's just a case of fiddling around with a toy, but for us, it helps us to function, end quote. A fifth Tumblr post, on screen now, made on the 16th of May 2017, proposes, quote, We change how we refer to stim toys by calling them stim or fidget tools instead, end quote, raising the objection that neurotypical people were, quote, treating them like toys, and in a way who can blame them since toy is in the name, end quote. The post claimed that fidget toys were, quote, a tool for regulating and expressing our emotions, end quote. The author invited people to reblog their post, but requested that any neurotypical people reblogging it refrain from adding any commentary. These Tumblr posts have certain key features in common. Firstly, they were all made at the peak of the fidget spinner fad, almost all of them in May, just before the crash. Secondly, they all repeat various false claims about fidget spinners, asserting they were originally intended for neurodivergent children, which in fact they were not, asserting they were never intended to be toys, which in fact they were, and asserting they have specific therapeutic benefits for neurodivergent people, such as regulating their emotions and assisting their concentration, which in fact they do not. Thirdly, several of the posts used fidget spinners as a rhetorical device with which to launch antagonistic statements at neurotypical people, a common feature of neurodivergent discourse on Tumblr. Posts such as these, recycling the same false claims and anti-neurotypical talking points, can still be found all over Tumblr, typically dating to the era of the fad's peak. Given the actual historical origins of fidget spinners and the range of scientific studies which have debunked their supposed neurological and psychological benefits, these posts have not aged well. Despite the fact that fidget spinners had been known and sold for at least a couple of years prior, the actual fad took some time to ramp up in 2017. 
Most notably, references to fidget spinners in education research show no interest in their alleged therapeutic advantages for neurodivergent children, and it appears that particular narrative was only invented later in the year as a marketing strategy. A research article by B. N. Aisu, F. Gursoy Aral, and E. Özdoğan Özba, entitled An Investigation of Children's Opinion on Games and Play Areas, published in July 2017, contains data gathered from the first quarter of the year. This data indicates children's interest in fidget spinners around the beginning of 2017 was still very low, with only 2% of children surveyed saying they wanted to play with fidget spinners. It is significant that interest was so low at this point, demonstrating not only that the fad had not yet begun, but also that there had apparently not yet been any distinct connection made between fidget spinners and their supposed benefits for neurodivergent children. During 2017, claims for the therapeutic benefits of fidget spinners grew more frequent, and they were repeatedly marketed as a concentration and anxiety management tool for children with ADHD and autism. However, these claims did not come from psychologists, paediatricians or other medical professionals, nor did they come from clinical studies or academic research. On the contrary, they came overwhelmingly from fidget spinner retailers and increasingly from online neurodivergence activists on sites such as Tumblr. There was an abundance of anecdotal evidence and hearsay supporting these claims, and since various focus tools had apparently proved helpful for children on the ADHD or autism spectrum, the idea that fidget spinners would provide the same benefits seemed intuitively correct. In June 2017, after the fad had already crashed, an article in the online magazine Autism File, produced by the website Sensory Smarts, was still arguing that fidget spinners were beneficial for children with ADHD and autism, on the basis that, quote, there's a ton of anecdotal evidence and an increasing body of research to show that focus tools work, end quote. However, read more carefully, this statement does not provide any direct evidence supporting the therapeutic claims made specifically for fidget spinners. Rather, it cites anecdotal evidence and an unspecified body of research that focus tools work. The assumption is that if focus tools work, then fidget spinners will provide the same benefits. But there is no rigorous demonstration that fidget spinners are focus tools and no evidence provided for any of the therapeutic benefits claimed for them. On the 18th of May 2017, an article on the website The Conversation by Catherine Isbister, Professor of Computational Media, University of California, argued in favour of fidget spinners. Isbister said, quote, My research group has taken a deep look at how people use fidget items over the last several years, end quote. Adding, quote, What we found tells us that these items are not a fad that will soon disappear, end quote. While that statement is certainly true of fidget items in general, the fact that it was made in an article promoting the therapeutic benefits of fidget spinners just a month before the fad would crash and the toys would virtually disappear from the market is embarrassingly unfortunate. However, it should also be noted that while Isbista was enthusiastic in her praise for the benefits of fidget spinners, she also acknowledged, quote, there hasn't yet been a definitive study of the impact of these toys in the research world, end quote. Instead, she appealed to anecdotal evidence. Earlier that month, on the 14th of May 2017, a much more cautious article on the National Public Radio website quoted clinical psychologist and professor Scott Collins warning that the claim that fidget spinners benefited neurodivergent people were unsubstantiated, saying, quote, there's no evidence to support that claim, end quote. Collins stated explicitly, quote, I know there's lots of similar toys, just like there's lots of other games and products marketed towards individuals who have ADHD, and there's basically no scientific evidence that those things work across the board. End quote. Even more bluntly, Collins commented, quote, If their description says specifically that this can help for ADHD, they're basically making false claims, because these have not been evaluated in proper research. End quote. Throughout the fad, Collins remained a voice of reason, while various media outlets continued to repeat the retailers' claims that fidget spinners were specifically beneficial to people with ADHD and autism. On the 1st of June 2017, when the craze was already in a steep decline, Collins was quoted again, this time in an article by cognitive psychological scientists Megan Smith and Jana Weinstein on their website commenting on research in education. 
Smith and Weinstein dismissed the claims made for fidget spinners as a mere marketing strategy, citing Collins' opinion that these claims were attractive because they offered the toy as a simple fix, saying, quote, Collins notes that because there's such a large number of children with ADHD and a lot of parents are searching for help, it makes them vulnerable to marketing ploys like the fidget spinners, end quote. Smith and Weinstein said, quote, we tried to look for evidence that fidget spinners really do help learning, end quote, but added that although they found that some scientists believed the toys could help in theory, they could find, quote, no empirical studies to back up these assertions, end quote. They also commented that despite anecdotal evidence, actual research found that other sensory treatments, including squeeze balls and various fidget toys, quote, do not appear to be consistently effective, end quote. By July 2017, the fad had already crashed, and there was still a lack of deep scientific studies specifically testing the benefits of fidget spinners. However, there was already sufficient evidence to demonstrate that the enthusiastic claims made for the therapeutic benefits of fidget spinners were unsupported. An article in October 2017 by paediatricians Rachel A. Schechterer, Jay Sharp, Kate Fruitbank, and Ruth Lynn Milenaik advised, quote, Fidget spinners and other self-regulatory occupational therapy toys have yet to be subjected to rigorous scientific research, end quote, adding their alleged benefits remain scientifically unfounded, end quote. They described the fidget spinner as a new fad and said paediatricians should, quote, inform parents that peer-reviewed studies do not support the beneficial claims, end quote. Like other articles, they also cited the judgment of Collins that, quote, the reason for the popularity of fidget spinners is because parents want to believe that there is a simple device to help their child focus. End quote. In November 2017, an article by Christine Jarrett in New Scientist, a popular science magazine, cited research by psychiatry specialist Dr. Julie Schweitzer of the University of California, Davis, who had investigated the alleged therapeutic benefits of fidget toys such as spinners, as well as other sensory toys and devices. Jarrett wrote, quote, Schweitzer warns that fidget spinners are unlikely to be beneficial, end quote, saying that even though Schweitzer noted that fidgeting in general could provide some slight benefit for neurodivergent children, quote, the fidgeting I recorded was naturally produced by the children and not external or a toy. The fidget spinners that I have seen are likely more distracting than helpful, end quote. In April 2018, an important paper was published in the Journal of Attention Disorders, Authors Paolo A. Graziano, Alexis M. Garcia, and Taylor D. Landis described their study of 60 children as, quote, the first, to our knowledge, to rigorously examine, among a sample of young children diagnosed with ADHD, the extent to which fidget spinners a. increase gross motor activity, b. improve children's behavioural and attentional functioning in class, and c. distract other children in class, end quote. The author's conclusions contradicted directly the dominant narrative on fidget spinners. The abstract is worth quoting at length. Quote, during the initial phase of treatment, but not during the final phase, the use of fidget spinners was associated with a decrease in activity levels. Children's use of fidget spinners was associated with poorer attention across both phases of treatment. Conclusion Fidget spinners negatively influence young children with ADHD's attentional functioning, even in the context of an evidence-based classroom intervention. End quote. So this study found that not only were fidget spinners not beneficial for children with ADHD, they were actually detrimental to their concentration and work performance. By the end of 2018, educational professionals typically viewed fidget spinners as yet another short-term fad, produced partly by smart marketing and partly by both parents and teachers chasing a quick fix to more complex problems. An article published in the English Guardian newspaper on the 4th of December 2018 by education consultant Sally Wheel cited a report by Ofsted, a government body overseeing education standards in the UK. The Guardian article cited the report as dismissing interactive whiteboards, devotion to specific so-called individual learning styles and fidget spinners as mere gimmicks which should be abandoned in favour of educational basics. A year later, the scientific evidence against the benefits of fidget spinners had become overwhelming. 
On the 25th of November 2019, an article by journalist Jill Barche of the Heshinger Report, an online journal reporting on inequality and innovation in education, summarized the scholarly consensus saying, quote, Results from at least three scientific studies argue against allowing students to use fidget spinners in the classroom, even among children with attention disorders, despite marketing claims that the objects can be helpful. End quote. Barche cited a study published in October 2019 in the Journal of Applied Cognitive Psychology. This study, entitled Putting a Negative Spin on It, Using Fidget Spinners Can Impair Memory for a Video Lecture, concluded that, quote, Using a fidget spinner was associated with increased reports of attentional lapses, diminished judgments of learning, and impaired performance on a memory test for the material covered in the video, end quote. The authors also said that any benefits fidget spinners might have are, quote, relatively limited, or at least do not extend to the conditions present in the current study, end quote. Another study cited by Barche was published in January 2019 and entitled No Evidence for Performance Improvements in Episodic Memory Due to Fidgeting, Doodling, or a Neuro-Enhancing Drink. The study's abstract starts with the statement, quote, the media advertises fidgeting devices and nutrition supplements as possible ways to enhance cognition, which often have not been validated. End quote. After testing a number of supposed memory and attention aids, the authors observed that none of the products improved memory, noting that the fidget spinner actually reduced performance. The study concluded, quote, These findings strongly suggest that the scientific community should become more active in investigating claims of supposedly neuro-enhancing product, end quote. The study concluded, quote, These findings strongly suggest that the scientific community should become more active in investigating claims of supposedly neuro-enhancing products, end quote. The third study cited by Barche was the 2018 study quoted earlier in this video, entitled To Fidget or Not to Fidget? That is the question. This study found, quote, Fidget spinners negatively influence young children with ADHD's attentional functioning, even in the context of an evidence-based classroom intervention, end quote. After the fidget spinner craze had ended, a few Reddit threads invited neurodivergent people to comment on whether they had found fidget spinners helpful and whether or not they still used them. Although a few said yes, the overwhelming majority said no, with comments such as, quote, I found the spinners distracting and took too much concentration to use, end quote. And, quote, for about 30 seconds, then I got bored, end quote. And, quote, the spinners aren't engaging enough, end quote. And, quote, fidget spinners get boring fast, end quote. And, quote, no, never, end quote. Although this is only anecdotal evidence, it is entirely congruent with all of the scientific studies which reached the same conclusion. It is clear that the rise of fidget spinner popularity had nothing to do with any actual benefits, whether for neurotypical or neurodivergent people. Instead, it was a classic case of a retail bubble fueled by slick marketing, which preyed on what some people wanted to believe was true. Particularly noteworthy is the fact that the fidget spinner fad was spread widely among leftist circles who provided free marketing for the capitalist companies which sold the cheap device at massive profits. The speed with which neurodivergence activists enthusiastically accepted the marketing claims for fidget spinners and helped promote the product by repeating stories of its completely unsubstantiated benefits demonstrates how successful capitalist strategies can be at undermining the critical thinking of the very people who typically oppose them. Not only did leftist activists accept fidget spinner marketing claims, they even added to the mythology surrounding the fidget spinner, creating a leftist narrative which made the product increasingly attractive. This narrative eventually grew to prodigious proportions. Imagine a device deliberately created to help the neurodivergent. Imagine the woman who invented it was inspired to bring peace to the Middle East by assisting persecuted Palestinian youths. Imagine this woman was making no money from this device, while unscrupulous capitalist companies reaped the financial rewards of her ingenuity. Imagine the device was bringing emotional comfort and cognitive benefits to marginalised neurodivergent children. This mythological narrative was highly attractive to leftist and left-leaning individuals, who widely shared either elements of it or the entire story. It's a demonstration of how effective marketing can be when it hijacks ideological concepts and harnesses people's personal concerns. 
It's also a warning to be sceptical of unsubstantiated medical claims, especially when those claims emerge from capitalist sources and are completely unfounded on any demonstrable scientific evidence. If a capitalist is selling something with leftist-sounding rhetoric in their marketing, it's best to be suspicious rather than credulous. It's also very likely that in some leftist circles, the fidget spinner's mythological narrative was used as a self-justification for leaping on what was clearly yet another consumer product fad. There is another dimension to fidget spinners of which leftist and socially progressive people in particular should be aware. Fidget spinners not only emerged as the plaything for the economically privileged, they were also marketed, bought and sold by the digitally privileged. On the 17th of May 2017, during the height of the fidget spinner craze, an article on digital marketing website Neon made some important observations about the geographical trends of fidget spinner interest and usage. The article pointed out that the fidget spinner fad was confined to a very small geographical area of the global north. Fidget spinner retail activity and Google searches for fidget spinners were confined almost exclusively to this region. The article commented, quote, the trend is a largely Western one, end quote, noting that fidget spinner retail activity and Google searches for fidget spinners were confined almost exclusively to Ireland, the United States, Australia, the United Kingdom, and Canada. The article continued, quote, Beyond those countries, there's precious little interest from other continents, end quote. According to the article, the explanation for this was very simple. Fidget spinners were a luxury item enjoyed by the economically and digitally privileged. In the words of the article, quote, Like most trends, fidget spinners are born out of luxury and disposable income, so where those things are harder to come by, the trend gains less traction. End quote. It is ironic, though not particularly surprising, that this specific feature of the fidget spinner craze was noted by a digital marketing company rather than an organisation concerned by the socio-political and ethical implications of fads and crazes. Rather than promoting capitalist marketing propaganda, it would have been more helpful if leftists had used the fad to raise the actual social issues surrounding fidget spinners, such as the exploitation of the workers who produced them, the dangers of lead and other toxic metals contained in fidget spinners manufactured in countries with poor industrial regulation, an issue cited in several academic studies, learning tools and methods which have proved genuinely helpful for neurodivergent people, and the challenges of establishing widespread egalitarian digital rights and internet accessibility. Instead, we find Reddit threads in which communists unironically debate, quote, will gold-plated fidget spinners be available under communism, end quote. Summarising the facts about the rapid rise and fall of fidget spinners, we find the real narrative is unfortunately yet another predictable tale of successful capitalism and the co-option of leftist talking points for profit. Fidget spinners were originally intended as a toy for rich people, cynically marketed with false advertising, never proved to have any therapeutic benefits for people with ADHD or autism, actually detrimental to the concentration and learning of both neurotypical and neurodivergent people, overwhelmingly a fad of the economically and digitally privileged. A short-lived fad brought quick profits to capitalist companies, unwittingly aided by well-meaning people who uncritically promoted the fad with false advertising.